in the Zen we see that we are deluded. This is enlightenment. We have to become free even of the Buddha's teaching, even of enlightenment. That is the Buddha's teaching. The three body of Buddhas, Dharma body, manifestation body, or Nirmanakaya and Sambhogakaya. Nirmanakaya or manifestation body is a historical Shakyamuni Buddha as a person. He was born at certain place at certain time and lived for a certain period of time and taught and passed away. So actual person, that is a foundation of Buddhist teaching, that is a starting point. When Shakyamuni passed away, Buddha's student, Buddha's disciple couldn't find the second Buddha because he was so great, so uh, special person. Buddha was one of the three treasures in Buddhism. Without Buddha, there's no Buddhism. So they start to think, what is Buddha? And uh, first he said, that is Dharma. That uh, makes this person into Buddha. It's Dharma, because this person awakening to the Dharma, this person become Buddha. So actual Buddha is not Shakyamuni the five skandhas, but what he taught, the reality or the capital D Dharma that Buddha awakened to. And actually that Dharma is real Buddha. So that Dharma never die, even Shakyamuni as a human being died, that Dharma doesn't die. That is the beginning of the idea of Dharma Kaya. So even Rupa body, the body as a five scandals of Shakyamuni Buddha disappeared. You know, this Dharma body never die. That is origin of the idea of Dharma Kaya. But that idea grew in the history of Mahayana Buddhism. And that Dharma is not something abstract. But this, the way things are within this entire world, entire universe, is Dharma. So actually this entire universe is Dharmakaya Buddha. And they name that Buddha as a Vairochana. Vairochana Buddha means this entire universe itself and the way things are. That is Dharmakaya. And the Sambhogakaya is also created by in a minor Buddhist. That means not only Shakyamuni Buddha, but there, are, there must be many Buddhas in the past and the present and future. And those Buddhas are, Samboga means the reward, uh, sometimes translated into English as reward body. That means because of their pr long practice as a result or reward of long practice as a Bodhisattva, they become Buddha. And Mahayana Buddhists think there are many numberless Buddhas, such Buddhas, called Sambhogakaya. Uh, for example, Amitabha Buddha. There are many Buddhas in Mahayana Buddhism. All those Buddhas are called Sambhogakaya Buddha. The Buddha who became, attained Buddhahood as a result of their long practice as a Bodhisattva. So that is the beginning, origin of the idea of three bodies of Buddha. And Dogen says, uh, those three are actually one. That means Shakyamuni and his teaching and the, uh, his disciple, the Sangha, is a manifestation or actualization of absolute Buddha Dharma and Sangha, that is Dharmakaya. So Dharmakaya is boundless, but Nirvanakaya is a manifestation of that boundless universal Buddha within certain place, within certain time of the human history. So actually Nirvanakaya and some Dharmakaya is one thing. And all those Buddhas, as a Sambhogakaya uh, is also a part of this Dharmakaya. 
So all those three Dharma bodies and three treasures, Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, are actually one thing. And uh, after Shakyamuni passed away, you know, Buddhist tradition continues. Uh, so even Nirmanakaya Buddha disappeared, but still Dharmakaya is continue. And when we practice, within our practice, uh, Buddha Dharmakaya is manifested. That is a very basic belief or faith in Mahayana Buddhism. In Dogen's tradition, uh, there is a saying that when we find a teacher, our practice is half completed. Teacher means which kind of life I want to live. And the teacher is a ruling model, so I want to live like that person. That is the direction. And when we find that direction we want, we want to walk, that is almost half of the Bodhisattva path. It's very difficult. You know, there are so many teachers, <laughs> or, or fake teachers. <laughs> so it's really difficult. Unless we know what is a genuine teacher, we don't know what is a fake teacher. It's very really difficult. So I felt I was really lucky, fortunate. As a Buddhist in this country, in the United States, you know, the history of Buddhism is so short yet. So it's kind of difficult to find, to see, to judge who is, who are good teacher or not genuine teacher. Important thing is to, for young people who are interested in Buddhism, uh, to study the Dharma as much as possible and to meet different teachers and try to find who is the genuine teachers. Dogen tried to find a genuine teacher and he couldn't find it in Japan. So he had to go to China, and he found only one good teacher. It's really important to find a good teacher. The Dharma, Dharma teaching might be some difference from Uchiyamuroshi's or Sakiroshi's. Buddhism has been transmitted from India to many different countries in Asia and today in the West. But in each place, the unique nature or of Buddhism was created without changing the essence. Indian Buddhism, Chinese Buddhism, Japanese Buddhism, and the Buddhism in the Theravada tradition and Tibetan tradition are all unique. And I think each teacher has also unique. In a sense, Buddhism can change, because even though Dharma doesn't change. Sawakiro and Uchiyamuroshi are very different people, physically or karmic, in a karmic way. Sawakiro was, was from a very poor family and he had a very strong body. So he was a really tough person. And Uchiyamuroshi was from a rich family and he was very uh, intellectual. He studied philosophy. And yet, he, physically, he was a very weak person. He had TB since he was early 20s. And Sawakiro uh, graduated only from elementary school. But Uchiyamuro finished a uh, master course. They are very different. But what they taught are the same, same Dharma. And I'm also different from uh, both of them. One difference is I was born after World War II. You know, Japanese society was changed almost completely by the war. And Uchiyamuro was 36 years older than me. And so I was educated in the American way. So it's very different. As a comic person, there are some things I cannot agree or I cannot follow or imitate him. But I try to not change his dharma and his practice. But still, after he retired, uh, when I was 26, uh, I came to this country 
and it's very different, you know, from between ja Japan and the uh, United States. It's really different culture. The book project I'm working now is a book about the precept. You know, to become a Buddhist, we receive, uh, in Soto Zen tradition, we receive Bodhisattva precept. By receiving the precept, we become a Buddhist. As a teacher, I, when I give precept to people, I need to explain the meaning of the precept. No one is uh, forced to become a Buddhist. To become a Buddhist, they need their aspiration to become a Buddhist. To become a Buddhist, they receive Buddhist precept. But before receiving the precept, they need to understand the meaning of the precept. Once a year, we have, here we have a precept retreat in which I give lectures on the precept. And at the end of the retreat, we have a precept ceremony in which I give precept to the people who wish to receive. So I have been continuing to talk about the precept and I'd like to make one book out of that precept. I think precept is important, of course. <laughs> that is a gui guideline of our day-to-day -day life, based, in our case, based on the Zen practice.